their victims were both conscious. Nearly an hour after the original shooting, Montana Highway Patrol Trooper Wade Palmer reported to dispatch that he was under fire. When law enforcement arrived on the scene, they found Palmer unconscious with a gunshot wound and transported him to St. Pat's. Birch then made a call to his father, saying, I had a road rage incident. I think I might have shot a cop. Law enforcement used the father's phone to call Birch, who admitted his involvement in both shootings but refused to provide a location. Later that night, someone reported a white Escalade on Grooms Road and Birch was brought into custody. He will make his first court appearance Monday. In Missoula, Connor McCauley, MTN News. And we want to let you know a little bit more about Trooper Palmer. In 2015, he was awarded the patrol's highest honor, the Medal of Valor. That's when he helped a mother to safety after she was ejected from her vehicle, lying on the side of the road. Palmer pulled her to safety just as another vehicle came crashing into a multi-vehicle collision. Trooper Wade Palmer has been with the Montana High Patrol since 2012, and he is stationed at Detachment 112. That's in Missoula. Trooper Palmer also has a wife, and he has two young children. More now on the man who lost his life this morning in that deadly road rage incident. Loved ones of Shelly Hayes have set up a GoFundMe in his honor. And at last check, there was over $8,000 raised in that. Friends say that Hayes lost his life when he and a friend tried to help someone on the side of the road. Shelly left behind a six-year-old daughter, his family, and his girlfriend, and many friends as well. The money will be used to help expenses for Shelly's death. And we want to let you know that a GoFundMe has also been set up in honor of Trooper Wade and Palmer. And at last check, wow, $43,000 raised in a total of five hours. Again, Trooper Palmer is currently fighting for his life at a Salt Lake City hospital tonight. In light of this tragedy, our governor, Steve Bullock, released this following statement, quote, Lisa and I heartbroken to hear that one of Montana's finest is in critical condition. Trooper Wade Palmer showed extreme courage in the face of danger early this morning, and I know his actions made our state safer. The governor also said Palmer's family is in the hearts of all Montanans. All right, a Helena man sentenced to two life sentences for killing his parents one year ago. Caleb Taylor was sentenced today in Lewis and Clark County District Court. Back in 2018, friends discovered the bodies of David and Charlotte Taylor in their Cayuse Road home in Helena. Prosecutors allege Taylor burglarized his parents' business, but when they confronted him about it, he killed them. Taylor previously pled guilty to deliberate homicide as a part of a plea agreement. Attorneys for 32 plaintiffs in a massive Mile City sexual abuse case say school officials saw evidence of sexual misconduct by a former longtime athletic trainer years ago, but failed to report it. This after a new filing today in Custer County District Court. Earlier this week, 79-year-old James Jensen pleaded guilty to federal charges. However, officials for the Miles City Unified School District argue the claims don't have merit and should be dismissed. Plaintiff's attorneys say this new evidence shows former coaches and administrators knew there was sexual misconduct taking place, but never reported it. It might be the biggest issue of the 2019 legislature, and it's coming into focus this weekend. In a special Saturday hearing, two competing bills on Medicaid expansion are going to be heard. MTN's Mike Dennison gives us a preview of the hearing. At 9 a.m. Saturday in the old Supreme Court chambers, the House Human Services Committee will kick off an all-day hearing on these two bills. They start with House Bill 425, the proposal from Democratic State Representative Mary Caffaro to extend the current program with a few minor changes. Then in the afternoon, the 19-member committee will hear House Bill 658, the Republican alternative, sponsored by Representative Ed Buttery of Great Falls. Democrats and Governor Steve Bullock are behind Caffaro's bill. It's going to be a real opportunity for people to finally see and hear what the differences are between the two proposed options. I think it'll be a really interesting day with a lot of testimony um, from people around the state expressing why this program needs to exist, why we can't let politics get in the way of us having Medicaid, period. But Republicans, of course, control the majority at the legislature and on the committee, and they're looking to put some restrictions on the program. The Butcher Bill tightens eligibility, requiring 20 hours a week of community engagement, which could be a job or volunteer work. It also would charge a fee to people who own certain amounts of property. Representative Dennis Lenz of Billings is the chair of the committee hearing the bills. He wants to hear how the bills interconnect, but he also says Republicans believe Medicaid expansion should be helping people temporarily in need of care and not become a permanent benefit. We want to be able to provide them, if a Medicaid 
expansion uh, bill goes through, provide them with something that can be a stepping stone to get them over this hump, over this difficulty. Democrats say the GOP requirements will end up kicking Montanans off the program with no proof that people are improperly taking advantage of it. We've heard talking points and we've heard innuendo, but I have yet to have somebody actually show me data that supports any of those claims. Scores of people and lobbyists will be testifying Saturday on the two bills, and then panel members will ask questions, wrapping things up around 5 p.m. Supporters of Medicaid expansion also are planning a big rally at noon in the Capitol Saturday, right outside the hearing room. Buttry's bill is clearly the one to watch, for Medicaid expansion won't pass without at least some Republican votes. But what will it look like if it comes out of committee? We won't know that until next Friday, when the committee plans to vote on both bills. At the Capitol, Mike Dennison, MTN News. All right, thanks, Mike, for that. Let's move on to some sports news, shall we? The Montana Grizzlies headed to the Big Sky Conference Championship game. MTN's Derek Berkeley takes us back to Boise. He's been there all week for a look at these games. The Montana Grizzlies and Weber State Wildcats met once again in the Big Sky semifinals. These two powerhouse programs seem to meet every time we have a conference tournament. This time Montana was the top seed and had swept the Wildcats in the regular season. And they came out and showed their dominance once again from the opening tip, taking it to the Wildcats, built up a 20 point first half lead. And then unlike yesterday when the Grizz lost most of that lead, they put Weaver State away in the second half, leading by as much as 37 at one time. Montana wins the game 78 to 49. Ahmad Rory was the difference with 28 points, seven rebounds, and six assists while leading a stingy defense that shut down Weaver State's powerful offense. So now Montana moves into the championship game. They'll tip off at six o'clock Saturday night with right to go to the NCAA tournament on the line. The Grizz want to make that trip to the big dance for a second straight year. In Boise, Derek Berkeley, MTN Sports. All right, exciting stuff for Grizz fans. Well, it is a new era of the largest camping group in America. We're talking about KOA, which, of course, is headquartered in Billings. For the first time, a woman will officially head the largest system of private